Hey guys, and welcome back to Armored Brigade. I say welcome back because I have one uh, engagement under my belt now. Remember that one in Finland where we're defending the small town of Inkeroinen? If you haven't watched it, go and check it out. It was pretty good, I think. Now, this time around, let's create a campaign in the actual game. You don't have to play a single mission by itself. You can create your own campaign or pick from a number of pre-selected campaigns or even load some from, from Steam, if you like. Now, I'm going to go ahead and create a campaign. Let's make it a campaign that is in Finland again. I kind of know that a little bit now that I played, uh, you know, a couple games there. Uh, one game that I recorded. Let's go ahead and pick that, and we'll see what it actually means to create your own campaign. First up, we'll get to pick the map again. We're going to pick Finland. And I've scoped out an area here, down here. Look at this here. There's a town here called Pitta. I think it's Pitta. Imagine a year later, after that encounter in Inkroinen, which is up here. One year later, the Finnish now are the offensive, and they're trying to push the Russians back east. And they're coming from here, this town, which I don't know what it's called. And we're trying to move east and retake Pitta over here. And at our disposal, we have a mechanized force. And there are some mechanized units, as well as the infantry units, in Pitta. Let's go ahead and create something like that. So what you do is, on this map here, you select a starting point and an end point for your campaign. You don't select the individual maps. The game will create that for you. You cannot uh, pick them manually. But let's say our starting point is here. So basically that means if we ever get pushed back to this point and lose a battle, then the game is over. And here's going to be the ending point, and that's, uh, or the end point. That's where, if we get to this point and defeat the Russians here, the game ends. Okay, so here we have the starting and end point. Let's go ahead and generate those random maps that we're going to have. Now, by the way, if you have water in the area, it is harder for the AI or for the computer here, the game, to create the map. So we may not be able to do it right away. Nope, we couldn't. You can see right there we have a handful of maps created, but three of them are no good. The game is telling me here all sectors not valid. So there's some sectors here that are bad. Let's go ahead and do it again. Oh, we're lucky. This was quite lucky to get one that quick, I think, with all that water. So what we see here, we, we see five potential maps, or, yeah, five maps. And one is filled in, the other one's just outlined. The one that's filled in is the one we're going to start on. So basically the game is saying, you're going to start with a map here. Do we want that? Well, there's a bridge there. You see the yellow line and the red line? So we have a, you know, a road there, and there's a bridge right there. But it looks to me it's going to start on the Russian side. We're going to come from the west. Russians on the east. And that means we're not going to have, I don't think the objectives, this is not going to be a defensive map. We're going to have the objectives in the middle, right? So it's going to be past the map. It's going to make it harder for the Russians, I would think. Although, maybe not. They can be starting up at, at, up there in the north as well. Hmm. Let me go ahead and, and try it again. So what we do is we can do random sectors again. And maybe we'll change it a little bit. It's possible. Or we may sit here forever and click around, and then I'll just modify uh, the starting and end point. Oh, there's another one. Where do we start here? Right over there. Now, the that's totally different. The map is, the bridge is over there. So if we win on this map, we would then move on to this map over here with a bridge on the left flank. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and right-click and do it again. So let's say just move it around a little bit and see what we can get. I kind of want to get that bridge in the middle, if possible. Here's the straight line. The problem here is right here with the water, I think. But let's let's try it anyway. Oh, okay. We got something here. Only four maps this time around. This one we start with here. Okay. And the second one would be here. Again, the map is... It doesn't want to put it in the middle, right? So you want to have... Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Let me try playing around with it, and I'll come right back. Okay, I think I found something that's going to work. This time around, we only have four maps. We're going to start over here. So this is what we're looking at right here. That's our starting map. If we win here, then we move on to this map over here. You can see the bridge is, while it is to the south, it is in the middle. So that's kind of interesting. There's a big river or inlet from the Baltic Sea, I guess, going in here. So it's going to be tricky. There's a town up there in the north. They might... We might see engagements up there or in the south. I don't know. We'll have to see what, what actually happens there. That could be tricky. You know, a lot of water is impassable. 
if we win here, we move on to the final map, and that would be Pitta. I think it's down there in the southeast corner. It's really right here. And if we get pushed back, by the way, we end up on this map here with our starting town there to the west, to the, uh, yeah, southwest. I can, that, that looks pretty good to me. Let's go with that. And looking at the settings that we have at our disposal, we have a player supply of 30%, and that is... Well, in between the different maps, we get to refit our units. Any unit that get destroyed, we can bring back. We can't buy any new units, I don't think, but um, but we do get a certain percentage back, and that's this one here, 30. 30%. 30 Let's go with that. Allow night battles. Yeah, we'll do it. It's going to create it on its own, so I don't really know what's going to happen. Allow varied weather. Yeah, we'll do that too. And let's say done here. And by the way, I think what we'll do is after we get to the actual game, let's pull up Google Maps and take a look and see, you know, Street View and see if we can actually see what it looks like over there in Finland. So Southeast Finland, we are here. These are our units. We have better training, better morale than the Russians. And you know what? I was thinking about, I was playing around with it before. Instead of having air superiority, none or balanced, let's give them the air superiority. So they're going to have, I don't know, MiGs, whatever coming in in the 80s there, um, attacking us. And that should make it interesting, I would think, right? We have that training and morale advantage here. Hmm, yeah, that's going to be interesting, I think. Okay, so we're going to say 1982, June. That is good. I'll be doing this time in the morning, 6 o'clock in the morning. It's not going to be... Well, some units have night vision, right? And I don't know if that's going to be playing a factor. Do we want night vision here? Maybe we'll go with a daytime battle here. But we'll bring down the weather. I did that already here. Put it down to from good to fair. So we can't see as far as we could otherwise. Wind speed is going to be random. Warm. Warm might make a difference because if it gets really warm, you might get a message saying um, whatever, the ammunition cooked off. And that means basically exploded. And uh, you can have a bad effect from that. Terrain, summer. Ground condition, good. So pretty fast to go. And then destruction, 20%. You know, a year later, that's going to be destruction there. Let's keep it at 20. Okay, that looks good to me. Let's go to done. And now we here get to pick our actual units if you want to. And you know what? I did set them up a little bit differently before. Let me see if I can remember that. So what I was thinking about is this here. We both have mechanized units, right? We're both going to be auto-picked. I want to have the units presented to me and see what I can do with them instead of picking everything perfectly. So we're going to have a combat power of 3840. The USSR is going to be variable, highly variable here. Are we going to leave them at zero or are we going to bring them down? I mean, they have that air superiority. I don't know. I guess we can leave them at that. Let's do that. Let's leave it here. We're going to have auto. So the computer is going to pick uh, based on these numbers here. We're going to get mechanized. We're going to get armor. Not so much infantry. Some support, air, 30%. I don't know if we're actually going to get any air. We could say we don't have any air. Yeah, we can bring that down right down to zero. No air for us. We'll bring up the uh, Russians to 50%. They can, they can pick all the way up to 50% of their force of uh, air. But bring down maybe the armored assets here down to 30%. And mechanized to bring that down as well. Bring up the infantry a little bit. Let's do that. So we're going to see more infantry units there. Okay, let's leave it at that. So they have air superiority, but on the ground we are stronger. We have other units. Uh, we have more mechanized and armor units than they do. I mean, hopefully. Anyway, so that's all we can do here. Let's go ahead and say done. And now we have our uh, campaign. I'm going to go ahead and right away save it. And I think it's spelled Pitta, like that, the town. The campaign Pitta. What do we need to do here? Southeast Finland, nothing really, but show hidden in the after action report. Yeah, we're going to see the units there. Uh, show victory levels, yep, at the top of the screen. And I here we have a morale of 10 that I had from before. Um, do I give myself 10? So what I'm thinking is, a year later, right? The Finnish were pull, pushed back, but now they're attacking in their homeland. If you remember in World War II, they were pretty... I mean, the Finnish morale was pretty good, I think. So let's go ahead and bring it up to 10. In return, the Russians have that air superiority. 
We'll see what that means. Anyway, we'll save it there. And then we will... Well, that's all we can do. Let's go ahead and play. Oh, no. Oh, I forgot this. Yeah. If you have uh, air assets, and we don't, we brought that all the way down, and even if you don't bring it down to 0%, you might not get the option to buy anything. But if we have, at this screen here, we could pick what kind of air assets we're going to use. And I don't know if the Russians get to do that. I hope they do. I brought it up to 50%, so we have a 49.24. Not using all of it here. Can't pick any more units. Not option here. So these are the units that we have, but let's look at them in a minute when we get to the map. We don't have any artillery. No, uh, and, uh, I mean, no guns and no artillery or minefields. No obstacles. Zero out of zero. Okay. Well, it's nothing I can do then. Yep, let's go ahead and pick... And, yep, let's go to the map and take a look at it. All right, so here we are. This is the first map. All right. So we're on this lake. Sarkjervi over here. And another lake down here. That is what we are starting. You can zoom out here. You can see we're going to be coming down to the bridge right around here, right? And there's Pitta. Oh, it's only one. I thought it was two. Two there. Two vowels. Okay, doesn't matter. Um, yeah, so the Russians are here. And we're starting here. Tesyoki is our starting town. That's what I had in mind. Hopefully we'll win this battle. But let's go ahead and find Pitta on Google Maps, right? And I already did locate it here. Pitta in Finland. Um, it is too here, but oh well. Uh, let's go and see. If we go ahead and zoom out here, look at the map. We can actually go... Well, here's the bridge, right? There's the bridge. Where is that lake? Sarkjarvi is up here. Okay, that's good. Let me just take a look at the map again. So if we go down here, we can maybe take a look at... Is there a big road here? Not really on this map. I mean, there are roads here, right? Um, let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit. If we look around this big lake here, and we'll see what that looks like in real life, that might be interesting, right? Is there going to be anything here? Maybe not. That might not be anything. Yeah, there's nothing here. You can't go and look here. They haven't done anything. There are some roads here, but you, you can't do it. You can look at the highway, I guess. Yeah, we can look at the highway. So the highway here is marked. And I don't know if they had that in the 80s. So if I go back... There's the highway, E18. Hmm. That's this one down here. So right down here. I guess that's this one here. E18 is here. Okay. Yeah, so it is right there by the shore. Well, we can take a look here and see what it looks like. Let's drop it on the highway, I guess. Well, actually, we'll take this road here instead. And take a look at what it looks like in Finland. <clears throat> a lot of forest. Kind of expected that. Not much deciduous tree, not many deciduous trees here. So like evergreens. So that's our terrain here. And it doesn't look like there's very hilly around here. It might be. Yeah, there is a lot of forest in Finland. Hmm. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Can't really get any further into the into the map, right? We don't have any option to go. I mean, up here, no. If I select that again. Yeah, it's right there. There's that town. Where was that town? It's this one over here. Right just outside, you know, where we are with our map. Yeah, just outside here. Yeah, it's over there. Okay, well, that's uh, that's all, I guess. Well, let's leave it at that and go uh, and take a look at our units. But uh, what time do we have? 15 minutes. Okay, yeah, let's take a look at our units. So, hmm, what are we looking at here? We have three objectives here. One over there. And if you remember, the Russians can start in this sector over here. Except for their, um, their recon units, they can start in this area as well as back here. And we are the same on this side. There are two objectives here. They are very close to us. Are they very close to us now that I think about it? Um, this one here, there's a there's a big lake in the way. We have to start over here and then rush over there. We do have some of these recon units as well. It looks like there's a height here, right? A hill. Yeah, there's definitely a hill here. Yeah, definitely. Let's go back to the map, though. Let's look at our order of battle and take a look and see what we have. 
It's going to be a lot of units. Let's go with the recon first. We have three of them. Two are dismounted scouts, so just uh, foot soldiers, basically. Hiding. You know what? They probably will be good to keep them, you know, hidden somewhere where it's useful. And then we have one PT-76 here. Okay, that is pretty good. So somewhat armored, I bet, but probably not a whole lot. It has a coaxial uh, machine gun here, 7.62. And this D-56TM gun with some penetration, not a lot. You know, if you think about a, an armored unit tank, uh, it would have more like 300. No, it wouldn't have 300. Their gun would have 300 maybe, but the armor here, you can see 18 millimeter here, it would take out another unit of this, right? So 30 in penetration there. Yeah, armor on these units are not great. Kinetic, yeah. So that's what they have. And then they have this one here, the... Um, the machine gun, which is, I mean, it's useful. It's good to have. That's the only one that we have that is actually mobile, really. Let's go back now, or let's go into the infantry section. We get one platoon. We only get one platoon. Well, they're mechanized, right? So three infantry squads here. We'll see what we can do with them. You know, hmm. Maybe they can hold, you know, once we take an objective, we let them hold it. And then mechanized section. We're going to have a lot here, I think, right? We have two HQ units here, and then we have a number of platoons. And each platoon will have three vehicles, APCs, armored personnel carrier, with three squads as passengers there. So that's a lot. Seven, so 21. A lot of mechanized. We're going to be fast. We're going to be very fast, I think. I think this one here, BTR-60. It is pretty fast. 79 kilometers per hour. Reversing, not very fast. Wield. Yeah. NBC protection. Okay. Nuclear, biological, chemical protection on it as well. Mm -hmm. We have a heavy machine gun on it. So that's better right away. If we run into any of those uh, Russian uh, infantry units, we should be able to take them out, I would think, right? We can, make, we can suppress them at the very least. Signature is low on it too, and that means when we fire, it's hard to detect that we are firing. And then we have this one over here. Yeah, that's a machine gun as well. 7.62, more like a medium one or a light. So that's good. What was the penetration? Pretty high here. I mean, we could do some damage, right? The armor, it's about the same as the recon, really. Okay, that's them. That is the what we have here, the HQ. That's going to help us if we keep them strategically behind our our um, APCs. That's going to help uh, give commands quicker, right? So we'll do that. Armored units. Do we get any? Yes, we do. We get a whole company. Wow. And a platoon. Okay. So we get nine of these T-55As, main battle tanks. How good are they? 55 mile, uh, kilometers per hour. That is quite a bit slower. Which makes sense. Smoke generator. Hmm. Okay. They're tracked. Weapons. A hundred millimeter D10 T2S gun. High explosive fragmentation. Nine loaded. Th then thirteen uh, stowed. Or well, nine available. Ready. And different types of weapons here. You can look at the numbers down here. Yeah. So the penetration on this one is fifty, but it is very high damage versus soft. So if we tell them to attack um, infantry units, they, they can do some serious damage on that. Going down the list here of this one, a PDS weapon uh, or uh, ammunition, 270. Not bad, long distance too. This one is about the same, right? A little bit less. We have two loaded there. And then heat, very high, very high damage against soft and then we do good damage here. If you run into any of the Russian tanks, if they have one, we're going to do serious damage there, I think. And we also have night vision on them. 560 meters. Hmm. But limited elevation on the actual main gun, I think, there, yeah. Armor, 200. You know, from the front, this one's going to be tough to take out, right? So we want to make sure we face the enemy at all times. Don't ever show a rear here or the top. Okay. That would be our, well, would that be all of them? All are the same? Yeah, T-55 tank platoons. Okay, and that leaves us with our support units. 
Okay, we did get a lot of anti-air. You can see all these here, as well as this one, I think, are anti-air. Look at this one here. These are, well, two guys, basically, with an anti-air <clears throat> missile here, right? Anti-aircraft missile. What can it do? Four of those, not very much. Signature is high. Once we fire, the enemy are going to know where we are, right? Guided, fire, and forget. Okay, so they have uh, four of those. High damage. If we do hit them, can we hit them? Accuracy is very low. I mean, 40. But it goes all the way to 3,000 meters. That is far away. We can do that from a great distance. With a little bit of luck, we might be able to take somebody out. Penetration 40. Okay, what else do they have? Nothing really. Assault rifle and hand grenade if they get caught, which they shouldn't. Shouldn't have to use. And then we have these. What are these? ZSU 57-2. You know what? I am not at all familiar with these. Um, but it looks like we have an anti-air. So twin, yeah, two 57mm anti-air guns. S68 here. High explosive fragmentation. 208 loaded, so that's definitely something we can use against uh, any MiGs that come in. Max target speed 300. I don't know what the MiG is, how, or any other uh, Russian plane, you know. Signature is pretty high on that one. It's only one weapon, but they have two two comes of ammo. Yeah, okay, hmm. So this one will be good against air targets. This one is good against hard. So if we are pretty close to a... Well, maybe a mech, APC, a tank, we would have to be right on top of them to do any damage. Maybe from the flank we could do it. We could take them out then, but not head on. No way. We couldn't do it. So that's these. We have how many of those? Quite a few, right? Two. Well, two times four. Eight. We can put them strategically on, well, I don't know where. On a hill or something. What was the range on those again? So the range is far away, but accuracy goes way down past 800 meters. That's the one. Oh, wow, that's not very good. Because once you get down here, I mean, why fire, right? Maximum range, no point. I would say less than 800 meters, so we'll, we'll look at on the map and see what that actually means. I mean, we can look at it right now, actually. Um, where, where did that unit go? Right over here. So there it is. 800 meters is can't see it's too too red i'm playing in a window here by the way um 800 meters it's right up around here that's not very far right look at the map this is up to that point pretty much well when the mig i say mig but you know any uh, russian helicopter or plane comes in we they would if we have so many we have five of them we are going to be able to cover a pretty good area here, i think right yeah, I think it's going to work out. I mean, I'm pretty pleased so far. So now what we have to do, we have to decide where to put our units. And uh, what is it? About 25 minutes now. I'm going to stop it here, and next time we'll go in and place our units. So come back then. Bye, guys.